Hi, we are continuing with the heat engine cycle examples and this is on diesel cycle. The diesel cycle is idealized version of a heat engine cycle um, describing the second of the common internal combustion engines. Let me show you the Wikipedia page. So this is the Wikipedia page for the diesel cycle and one interesting thing about diesel engine is that the fuel is ignited by the temperature rise due to the adiabatic compression. You have seen that demo of the fire syringe and it's not just a lecture demo, it is an integral part of an actual working heat engine. For our present purpose, what's more important is the cycle itself. So this is the idealized diesel cycle. You can see that it's very similar to the auto cycle, both the expansion and the compression is adiabatic. Uh, we will contrast this with the Stirling engine, which is the only non-internal combustion engine that we'll talk about as far as the real engines go. So those features are similar, and they are also similar in that there's this idealized isochoric cooling process, which is um, idealizing what is a very complicated real world process. And the one key difference here is for the auto cycle, the switch between two adiabatic curves happened by isochoric heating in the auto cycle. The assumption was that volume is mostly the same, it's the pressure that changes. With the diesel cycle, the idealization happens the other way. The pressure is constant and it's the volume that changes. And you can read about it in, on the Wikipedia page. Apparently in a real diesel engine, the pressure does change. But for us, this is the cycle we'll analyze. All right, back to our notebook. So I copied over the PV diagram here from the Wikipedia page so that I don't have to redraw everything. But it looks like this diagram is a little bit overdefined. So let me label the parameters that we will actually use. So. Let me first relabel the points in the order I plan to go in. Let me label this A. We are going to start here, B, C, and D. So for comparison with the other cycles that we'll look at, we are going to need to specify the highest temperature, which is going to be at point B. And we are going to need to specify the lowest temperature, which is going to be at point D. And let me cross out the parameters that we are not going to use to specify our system. Because as I was saying, right now this system is overdefined. All the parameters you see labeled are not actually free parameters. So I think I'm not going to use this volume to specify the system. Um, I don't think I need any of these two pressures to specify the system. Um, and, and I don't think I need this pressure here to specify the system. Although it is a good way to label it since I have a constant pressure thing here. But especially for the comparison with the auto cycle, I think the better parameters to retain are these. The volume here, which I'm going to relabel as V sub H for high volume. And the volume here which I'm going to relabel as V sub L for low volume. All right, um, these four parameters should completely specify this system. So let's get started. So we are asking the same question as always. What are the network done and the heat transfers? And let me write down all the equations we have been using. Those haven't really changed. The ideal gas law. First law of thermodynamics, and for monatomic gases, the expression for the internal energy and the adiabatic relationship. All right, let's get started. Like with auto cycle, I want to get through this quickly. I'm really only doing this for comparison. Okay, so for A to B, the isobaric expansion. We haven't had this in a while, but hopefully you remember how this goes. With the isobaric expansion, the work done can be expressed simply algebraically. So the work done is pressure at point A times the change in volume. Volume at B 
minus volume at a which is v sub l the low volume and as before with the auto cycle i'm using the subscripts to indicate the quantities associated with a point with the goal of replacing those eventually in terms of known quantities i hope you remember isobaric expansion being complicated there's non-zero work done and there's non-zero change in internal energy because there's a change in temperature this is the familiar expression from the previous examples and temperature at A is unknown, we'll figure that out later. And finally, we use first law to express the heat input, which is going to be change in internal energy plus the work done by gas. So let me just write that out. All right, let's keep going. The adiabatic expansion from B to C. So now things get easier. The heat transfer is zero, it's adiabatic. So we can say that the work done is minus of change of internal energy. And we can express that in terms of the temperatures. The temperature at point C is lower than the hottest temperature, so this is positive, as we expect it to be. Because there are so many minus signs, I want to make sure I didn't make a sign error. All right, chugging along. Isochoric cooling from C to D. So here the work done is zero, and all the heat transferred goes into changing the internal energy. Make sure this is negative because there's heat flowing out from the system for this step. All right, finally, the adiabatic compression from D to A that completes the cycle. Since it's adiabatic, heat transfer is zero, and the work done is minus of the change of internal energy and double check that this quantity is negative as it is supposed to be for work done on the gas and temperature at point A is larger than the lowest temperature. All right, so these are all our expressions. And so we wrote this all down, introducing as many unknowns as we want to use. Now we should track them and make sure we have a way of finding them out. So let me highlight the unknowns in cyan. Uh, I don't know the pressure at A. I don't know the volume at B. And I don't know the temperature at A. And I'm not going to highlight a quantity that I already highlighted before because that'll mess up with my unknown count. And the last that I haven't highlighted is temperature at C. All right, not as many unknowns as I feared, only four. So figuring out these unknowns is where all the expressions we wrote down comes in. And looking at it, I think the easiest thing to figure out is temperature at A. It's connected adiabatically to point D. And I know everything I need to know at point D and A to express the temperature at A. So I went through this derivation when I did auto cycle, so I won't go through it again. But as a reminder, this is the result in auto cycle. So in auto cycle, we had this result. Temperature at A is TL times the ratio of the two volumes, high over low, raised to the power of gamma minus one. And this is actually going to be valid for my diesel cycle too. So. Let me write that down on the other page. The temperature at point A is equal to the low temperature times the ratio of the volumes raised to the power of gamma minus one. All right, now treating this temperature at A as a known quantity, I'm going to express one of the other unknowns. This is all going to be chained together. So the next quantity I can figure out easily is pressure at A, because now I know the volume and temperature. I can use the ideal gas law to say pressure at A is equal to NKTA, which now I know, over VL. All right, so now I'm going to treat this as another known quantity. If I know pressure at A, then I know pressure at B, where I know the temperature. That means I can express the volume there. So the volume at B is 
using the ideal guess law again, NKTH divided by the pressure at A, which is also pressure at B. All right, so that's another known quantity. Now that I know the volume at B, I can express temperature at C through the same formula as this one here. I'm just going to try to remember it from my memory. It is Tc is equal to, I relate it to the temperature at point B, which is the high temperature, times, and it's lower, so it must be volume at B divided by volume high, raised to the power of gamma minus 1. All right, so that's the temperature at C. So like with Uru cycle, I'm not going to work this out algebraically because there's no real payoff to look forward to. Um, but these are enough formulas that I can do the comparison numerically when I get to the summary video. Let me highlight a few more quantities. This input, got that on the first try. Now output, I need to express it as positive quantity. So it does come from here, but I need to express it as a positive quantity. QL is equal to 3 halves NK TC minus TL. And finally, I can write down the work done. And the work done is the sum of the three contributions from A to B, B to C, and D to A. All right, that's enough. These are all in terms of quantities I know. So I can now plug in the numbers if I'm given the low volume, high volume, and the temperatures. So we'll be using this result for the summary video. Until then, bye.